Welcome to another episode of We Don't Die. I'm your host, Sandra Champlain, author of the international best-selling book called We Don't Die, A Skeptic's Discovery of Life After Death. And our guest today is Nicole De Haas. And again, you've figured out this is a video episode, so we don't do too many of these, Nicole, but I'm grateful for this one. If you're a listener listening in on iTunes, just know you can come to YouTube and you can see the video of this episode. Nicole is a tutor with the Arthur Finley College in the UK and with the Zwanenhof, you'll have to pronounce that for me, in Holland, and has her own center for mediumship and training. Before her work as a medium, Nicole worked in the field of psychology, social work, and kinesiology. Psychology is her passion, and she feels it's important to include this in the training of mediumship. Nicole teaches and demonstrates in the Netherlands, as well as other countries like Finland, England, Italy, Germany, Switzerland, and the USA. She's the author of the book, Silver Cloud Beyond Words, Inspiration and Philosophy from the Unseen World. Her website is NicoleDeHaas.nl. Nicole DeHaas, a warm welcome to We Don't Die Radio. Thank you so much, Sandra, for inviting me. I look forward to it very much. Oh, me too. And I get always tongue-tied because I think like a little kid at Christmas, I get excited. I have a package I'm just about to open. So how do you pronounce the name of the Zwanenhof? Zwanenhof. Okay. Well, Zwanenhof. Yeah, Yeah, I got to give it a try. And uh, also for my listeners, I'm still suffering with a bit of a cold, so I may mute myself just to sneeze or cough or something, but I'm fine. I feel good on the inside. My voice sounds a little raspy though. It may be sexy. I don't know, but that's all right. <laughs> so, Nicole, you're living in Holland? Yes. Yes. I'm from Holland. Yes. Oh, very and, good. Uh, so English is not my native language, uh, but of course I'll do my best because I also work internationally and I teach in English. So I'm sure people will understand me and uh, follow me. Yeah. We can understand you loud and clear. So how does your story get started of even getting involved in mediumship and the yeah. after things? Well, actually, uh, I'm coming from a family. Uh, my father was or is an atheist. He, is, he doesn't believe in anything. Uh, my mom has a Catholic background, but not a very active uh, a part in it. So I actually did not grow up uh, with any religion or uh, the concept of God or religion. So uh, actually, uh, my belief system was at that time, there is possibly something because I felt it inside, but I had no clue what it was. Um, I was very sensitive as a child, very sensitive. Uh, you know, I could easily cry over everything. I was afraid in the dark. Um, I heard those voices around me, uh, but I had no clue what it was. And uh, by the time I was 11 years old, we moved from the city to the countryside uh, to an old farmhouse. And there I had my first very vivid uh, experience with spirit world. And there was a small girl suddenly standing in my bedroom and I saw her as clearly as I see you on screen. And uh, she gave me her first name and she told me she was buried in the garden next to my bedroom. And I went to my mom and she thought I, you know, it it was my imagination. Of course. Uh, So it took a few months and then my parents decided to garden and there were those, those, those big bushes in the garden and they hired a machine and uh, people to get rid of those bushes. And then there was that grave and the girl's name was on it. So that was my first very vivid experience. That's pretty extraordinary. Yeah. Yeah. I know that now, but at that time, I think I did not really recognize what was going on. No, you're a kid growing up yeah. and what Absolutely. happens when we're young, we believe it's all real. Absolutely. So um, that was the only experience actually in my teenage years. Um, And then it became quiet again uh, until my uh, adult years. I think around the age of my early 20s, I think it started slowly coming back. And 
when I adopted my first child, I have three adopted children from the United States. When I right. adopted my eldest child, she had a lot of medical problems. Uh, I decided to stay at home for her. So I gave up my job. I wasn't happy in my job at that time. Uh, and then slowly the healing and the psychic work came in. And then I met the right people or the spirit world brought the right people on my pathway, actually. As yeah. they do. They definitely do, yes, yes. When the student is ready, the teacher is yeah. up here. Yeah, so uh, at that time, I think I was in my 20s, end of 20s, when really mediumship entered uh, my life. Um, and we moved to the east of the country because my husband uh, got a job. Uh, somewhere else and uh, I met some people here in the east and they said to me oh you have to go to the Art Affinity College and I said what's that because I hadn't heard of it but it got my interest so you know I was curious and I looked it up and that's how the journey in mediumship actually got going uh, yeah yeah so I went to the college in 2007 mm -hmm. and uh, then it unfolded all quite quickly very quickly. Yeah. yeah. I guess it was just the right time. Yes, yeah, sure. Yeah. yeah. Sure. So by mediumship then, it was the evidential or mental mediumship. Yeah. Well, I started right. doing healing before oh. I went to the Arthur Finty College and some psychic development in some courses in Holland. Um, but I never made a, con a real contact with the spirit world, so to say, before I went to the college. So uh, that was my first experience there. And uh, it was so natural for me. And it felt like coming home. And I remember those first few contacts that I did. Um, I just did it. And I had no clue where the information came from. But I just did it. I gave, and I gave the information. And it was all correct. So apparently it just worked without any training. Do you remember the first um, medium reading you gave or some of the details? Yeah, yeah. Well, the very first one, there was one that I did in Holland before I went to the college. Mm -hmm. And I remember the teacher saying to me, uh, come up front and uh, try to make contact. And I said to her, you know, I have no clue what to do. And she said, oh, just give it a try, you know. And then I remember saying that I had a lady with me and I gave the name, the first name of the lady, and I, and I gave her job and the area where she lived, and it was all correct. That's very you know, specific. It was just a few, a few sentences, but very evidential. Mm -hmm. uh, but that's something that I had to learn because I'm trained in, in a very evidential way. Um, but what I missed throughout my journey and what came in later, fortunately, was the emotional side of mediumship and bringing in um, the feeling, the love and the emotions. So that the whole context of not only giving evidence uh, became a good context like it should be. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Because with and this also the trans and physical development, but especially the, my trans development helped me in coming closer to myself in building that relationship with the spirit world and eventually to, uh, to go more from the mind to the heart, so to say. Right, right. Yeah. You may have to give a little distinction on yeah. the different types of mediumship. Yeah. So mental mediumship, I think, is what most people do when you're sitting across from yeah. a medium. Yeah. If you feel your grandmother's here. But yeah. uh, we have spoken on this show many times about trance and physical, but this yeah. could be some of the very first episode. So if you wouldn't mind yeah. sharing what those are. Yeah. Well, where, where mental mediumship is a very active form of mediumship, if we take a look at trance, trance is also mental mediumship because it still moves through the medium's mind, um, but it's a very passive state. Uh, trance is a bit of a misconception, and I don't know if you have heard it, but I'm involved in the scientific research as well to do with the EEG measurements and no that's see, fantastic yeah to see where we are um, uh, in what state we are when we do like a trans demonstration or when we do a physical seance um, it's still in the early stages of the research so we can't do make any conclusions yet but the interesting thing is that um, 
are not going into a very deep trance state. Uh, and we found out, because there are more physical mediums involved uh, in this research, that actually what happens is that we go into one of the highest states of consciousness that feels like a trance state. Sure. Because you're, you know, you're not aware of your body. Um, uh, you can get the same physical sensations as you can get with trance, uh, but still it's different. Uh, in trance, the spirit world needs you to be there in that state to be out of the way so that they have access to you. When I go into the highest states of consciousness, then I don't need to be out of the way because I become one consciousness with them. And that's the difference. So that's interesting. And that was um, um, an eye opener for me because I had no clue. When I started sitting for trance myself about 10 years ago, I had no clue what trance was. I had no clue what to do. Mm -hmm. uh, so trance, if we speak about trance, trans mediumship, it's like this, uh, the sharing of mental and physical energies between the medium and the spirit communicator. And uh, in trance, there is uh, a control, a state of control, but it varies. It can be a light control, it can be a deeper control. Uh, so that's trance. And um, if we speak about physical mediumship, that's a different uh, way of working, of course. A different me uh, physical mediumship is very rare. And I have to explain that there are two ways of physical phenomena or of uh, producing physical phenomena. Mm -hmm. And the first one is the traditional form. That's the ectoplasmic form. Right. And that's a form of physical mediumship where there is a cooperation between the medium and the spirit world. The medium produces an energy. The spirit world provides power. And together in that cooperation, the right vibration is being created so that uh, the medium exudes a substance called ectoplasm. And the spirit world uses ectoplasm uh, to manifest actually, uh, or to, uh, to build physical phenomena. And it can be like a voice box in direct voice where you can hear the voice of your loved one objectively or they can use the substance to cloak themselves in, you know, and have a physical body for just a brief moment. So that's um, the traditional rare form of physical mediumship. There is another form that you see uh, quite often, and that's the energy-based physical phenomena. Uh, but that's uh, totally different. Uh, because uh, the medium does not have to sit in a cabinet or actually you don't need to know who the medium is. It's mm -hmm. just a group of people sitting in harmony and love together. And the spirit world uses the spiritual energy of the sitters, the spirit energy of the spirit world and the natural earth energy to create physical phenomena. But that's very different from the way uh, I develop because I develop in the traditional way. In the dark, in a cabinet? In the dark, in a cabinet, with ectoplasm, yes. Uh, do you remember, Nicole, the first time you heard of physical mediumship? Or any thoughts? Because I know for me, it was just a couple of years ago, and it yeah. blew my mind. Like, somehow it was okay that we could communicate uh, psychically. It was even yeah. okay that somebody would sp speak through someone in the trance yeah. But suddenly, when people can make themselves real again and speak, yeah. I, it, it just it boggles my mind that that's a reality. But I've witnessed yeah. it enough that I believe it. But what were your thoughts when you first? Because now you come from a background in psychology. Yes, yes. So, so um, I was my wor my own worst enemy. <laughs> Not a bad thing. You know, the thing is. Um, I was introduced to physical mediumship, I think in 2009, I went to my first uh, seance of physical mediumship. And I went there, I went in and I was like, wow, what's happening? But at the same time, it was puzzling me what was really happening, you know? It was like I couldn't uh, get it somehow at that time. 
Um, so I went once at that time, uh, but in the meantime, I was told myself as well at the college and on other occasions by different mediums that I would develop physical mediumship. And I just put it aside. I didn't want to believe it. I didn't want to go into that area uh, because I didn't know what to think of it at that time myself. Um, actually, it was a few years later when I met David Thompson. Um, and I have said in many of his seances, because we became good friends, that uh, he really convinced me of uh, the reality of life after life in a physical way. Um, I'm not saying that beforehand I had doubts, but it, I was just questioning what was happening. And because I have a psychological background, you know, I know all about the possibility of subpersonality speaking through a medium or psychokinetic manifestation and whatsoever. So I knew all the other possibilities. Um, so I wanted to explore for myself. And uh, when I met David in 2014, he really uh, brought me from believing into knowing in that area of mediumship. That's yeah. pretty spectacular when you get there. Yes, absolutely. Um, I want to just back up before we get into your journey into physical, talk a little bit about uh, your book and trans mediumship within yourself. Um, yeah. You know, I've seen people speak in trance and very often there's different voices that speak through them or it's their own voice, but clearly someone different. What's your mm -hmm. experience? Um, my first trans course, well, actually I, I did only one weekend on trans training and for the rest, it was the spirit world who developed me, was in 2009 or eight, I think. It was just yeah. a weekend and I thought, oh, let, let's explore that area. Um, well, honestly, I wasn't ready at that time, I think, because my mind was all over the place. Right. I was sitting there in a group, you know, within a group of people. We had to practice and I could not get my mind quiet. I could not enjoy uh, the trance state uh, at that time. But there I had my first interesting experience in trance because uh, we had to do an, uh, an exercise where we had to speak in trance and I had never done that so I was so nervous and I thought oh I can't do it blah 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 uh, but you know I just gave it a try and suddenly there was a very strong control and I had never felt it like that before and I started speaking in a language that I can't speak it was Hindi and it was only uh, a few sentences and then it stopped and fortunately, there was a lady who could translate everything I said, and it was just very beautiful, but I had no clue. Well, that never happened again. It was only once. Uh, but I think the spirit world showed me at that time the possibilities. Uh, so I went home and I said to myself, OK, I'm going to sit every week for trends on my own. And I tried. I really tried, but it was a struggle. So I gave up after a few weeks. And then it took, I think, another year or a year and a half. And then more naturally, it came back into my development. So then I start sitting on my own first. And from then on, within a circle. Um, so that's how it started. Um, my controls uh, that work with me in trans and physical mediumship, uh, they came actually quite a few years later. Uh, one of my uh, main controls uh, in trans and physical mediumship is Tommy. And Tommy is a boy, a nine-year-old boy. And uh, it's very interesting because a few years ago, um, I think it was in 2015, I was working at the Art of Infant College um, on one of the weeks. And it was a week, uh, a German week with translators. And I had to do uh, a private sitting for a German student. So I was sitting here in my chair. Opposite of me was my uh, sitter. And we had a translator. And I don't know if you have been at the Art of Finley College, but they yes. have those heavy oak windows. Um, yes. And there was a big oak window behind me. 
And I was doing a sitting and I was working and suddenly my translator starts to scream because there is a loud noise and behind me that heavy oak window opens very slowly and very controlled, it closes again. And I thought, what's going on, you know? I had no clue. And those two people, they were scared and, and saying to me, what's happening? And I said, oh, you know, it's just an old building, you know, I tried to make something of it. Uh, but it puzzled me and I had no clue what it was. So I didn't tell any colleague at that week. Um, two weeks later, I had my transphysical week at the Swanenhof and I didn't tell anybody. And uh, on the Monday evening, I had to teach and David Thompson was doing a seance in the attic, in the seance room. And his circle leader came at the end of the evening and said to me, Nicole, you have to be in the seance tomorrow because the spirit world wishes to speak to you. And I said, okay, I'll be there. So the next evening I went in and the, one of the controls of David is called Timmy, also yes. a boy. And Timmy uh, came to me and he said, Nicole, do you know Tommy? And I said, no, I don't know Tommy. And at that seance, Tommy came to me uh, and spoke to me and he said, do you know about the window incident in England? Oh, and he said that was me and I wanted to let you know that I have waited almost 40 years to be able to work with you. The interesting thing is the next morning because it all, you know, it, it touched me so deeply and I thought I told no one about this and he just right. comes up with a window incident, you know. Sure. Sure. So uh, the next morning there were some uh, puzzle pieces falling into place. Because I said to David that morning, I said, you know what, when I was very young, I had a stuffed animal, a cat, and I named that cat Tommy. Hmm. And Tommy, every night when I went to sleep, I put uh, Tommy on top of my head to keep the voices out of my head. So that's oh, wow. interesting how it works, isn't it? Yeah, it sure is. So subconsciously, at a young age, I was probably aware of someone called Tommy but I named my stuffed animal like him and he was my protector in a way. So that's yes. very interesting how it all, how it all works. Yeah. So Tommy works with me in trance. He works with me. Uh, and then there is silver cloud. And uh, you spoke about the book. Uh, silver cloud is a native American uh, guy. Um, I have to be honest with you because uh, when I spoke, started doing mediumship and especially trans and physical i said to the spirit world i don't want a native american indian because we all have them you know so i was you know yeah. i was very critical about it um but the interesting thing was uh i had a lecture of a very famous physical medium on my computer and it was already there for over a year and i had no time to listen to it one morning I woke up and sometimes you can be in that state of being awake, but not fully awake, you know? Right, right. And suddenly I heard a voice very clearly, objectively saying to me, you have Tommy and Silver Cloud. And I remember waking up thinking, Silver Cloud? I don't want Silver Cloud <laughs> because, you know, I was thinking of Red Cloud and you know, all those names popped up in my mind and I of thought course. Silver Cloud, you know, but I, but I left it and I did not believe what happened that morning. That day I had time since a year to listen to the recording uh, of that lecture and that particular medium, uh, it was a lecture on physical mediumship, that particular medium started speaking about um, Silver Birch during right. the lecture. He spoke about the development of Maurice Barbanel, but he said before Maurice Barbanel was developed and uh, 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 worked in the Hen and Swaffer circle, there was another young lady and he said, I'm, no, I'm not going to mention her name because it's not important. And her control was named Silver Cloud. And Silver Cloud developed her into a successful physical medium. And I heard that on the same morning for the first time as that voice that I heard very objectively and clearly in my bedroom that same morning. 
so that was the start of uh, um, Silver Cloud coming into my life. And then mm -hmm. a, a, a all series of events happened uh, and he made himself known very clearly. And he started speaking through me and um, also writing through me. And that's how the book appeared. Because I always said to the spirit world, I'm not going to write the book. I have no time for it. I have no interest. I don't know what to write about. And I don't want to write about myself. So I had all excuses not to write the book. But he found ways to control me and to bring me in a trance state uh, on several occasions. Uh, and, it, and it just worked that way. You are so funny. And demanding. I don't want a Native American. I don't want to write a book. So fun. So yeah. that, did you actually, your fingers type out the book while you were in the trance state? How did that happen? No, I only could Keep write it. it with a pen. So it's okay. all written. It's all written with a pen. Um, some of the words are received through inspirational writing, which mm -hmm. is where I'm in a way aware of course because i'm looking at the paper but somewhere in a different place with my mind right. and i feel silver cloud uh giving an imprint of his thoughts into my mind mm. but most of it is received through automatic writing where i was in a deeper trance state with my eyes closed and i just wrote the pieces the interesting mm. thing to add uh and because i for a long time, I did not believe that Silver Cloud was a separate individual from me. Right. Well, he proved that because, uh, you know, I'm not a native English speaker. So when the, uh, I had my manuscript ready, I sent it to two native English uh, speakers, translators, to have it checked. Because, you know, if you write a book, you want it to be good English. So sure. um, I sent it to two people. And I wrote the first uh, chapter myself, like an introduction into the whole uh, story and about my mediumship. Well, the first chapter was full of uh, grammar mistakes and, you know, <laughs> it just sure. was not all correct. And the interesting English thing English is not your first all, language. All the 80 pieces that Silver Cloud gave were without any fault. So that's interesting, isn't it? It sure is. So that proved to me, and they had no explanation for it, the translators, and I said, well, I do. But it proved to me that he really is a separate identity. And, uh, you know, he has possibilities that I don't have when I would work from my mind. Oh, so. That's such great news. And I just ordered yeah. your book. Can't wait for it to come in. Oh. Um, buy it on Blurb, right? Yes. Yes. And in the description of this episode, for anyone who's watching um, or listening, there's a live link so you can uh, not only see Nicole's website, but purchase the book. So I'm really excited to read these. Yeah, I would love to hear. Yeah, super. Yeah. So then how did he move you into this world of physical mediumship? Because I am really fascinated by the world yeah. of physical mediumship and what's yeah. possible. Well, actually, I was already... Um, moved into the area of physical mm -hmm. mediumship before he started uh, the writing process oh. through me. Okay. Um, so it all happened a bit at the same time, I guess. Um, in 2015, we moved with my circle from my living room, where we created a seance room every week, to uh, a separate seance room at the Swanenhof. Um, and that's where we really progressed and moved forward. Up until then, uh, you know, to be honest, in the beginning, we had no clue what to do. We just sat with the spirit world and that was basically it. And we sat in red light and sometimes uh, I did some trance speaking and we had some rappings and some music acting strange sometimes, but not real, real, real physical phenomena. But that, but that was in the early stages. Um, when we moved to the Swanenhof and, um, you know, we had our own room where we sat every week. So that was very different. And it also took a while for me to get the right circle members um, together because, you know, the most important aspect of 
phys of developing the physical mediumship is harmony in the circle, harmony, dedication, and patience. So that's very important. Um, but we managed that, we created that, and my circle is like my spiritual family, you know? Uh, and we enjoy every minute with each other, even if there is nothing at all happening or only behind the scenes, and still we enjoy sitting that moment with the spirit world every week. Um, yeah. So Silver Cloud spoke a couple of times uh, through me in the circle. Um, and then he said at a certain point, it was, I think, in 2000, I don't know, 14, 15, he said, um, we're going to stop to speak for a while through the medium uh, because the focus needs to be on the physical development. So uh, I hadn't spoken, I guess, for two years in the circle, nothing. It was only development of physical mediumship. And then in 2016, they came back in that sense and took over control. And in the meantime, you know, I met David Thompson, like I mentioned, I met uh, Stuart Alexander. Right. Uh, and both of them have been uh, a, a, a big support in my development. Both have sat on several occasions in my own circle. Uh, and actually, uh, the first uh, independent direct voice uh, that we had was when David was there. You know, otherwise I would have never believed it. So it was a good thing that he was there. Uh, but sometimes we need those moments uh, to realize that we are on the right track. You know, yeah. those cherries on the cake. Yeah. Oh, so incredible. And so fast, the development, too. Yeah. 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 This, uh, it happened fast. But uh, I also have to say, uh, I can be very impatient <laughs> in a I way, you know. <laughs> How many people you know, are I'm, on your You know, so I'm far. human, you know. Uh, yeah, of course. You know, and we sometimes, we sometimes have that. And I notice that within my own development as well that I think, you know, I would like to be there tomorrow, but we all know that physical mediumship takes years to develop to a certain extent. Right. Yeah, yeah, it does. So the you call know, from the direct voice attempt, um, it eventually, uh, uh, we are now in the process of developing materialization. Uh, and we had a very successful attempt, a, a public attempt last January. Uh, and that was so touching and everyone present was crying and I was ill for days afterwards because it affected me a lot. Sure. Uh, but that was a big, big step forward. Could you explain what happened or give us a little, and yes. I just want to, um, how many people are in your home circle? Uh, we are with 10. 10 people. Oh, that's a good size group. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah. Okay. So we sat in my own seance room and that can fit 25 people. So we sat at uh, last January with 25 people. And I have to say it was only my second public seance uh, because um, um, I didn't want to do any public seances, but it was the spirit world somehow that pushed me forward and wanted me to do that day. Uh, and I learned to listen to the spirit world after making some mistakes as well. Um, so that's what we did. And what happened was that on somewhere throughout the seance, um, a father of someone sitting in the in, in room materialized and walked towards her and held uh, her face between his hands. Uh, you know, and you could, well, I couldn't, but everybody could feel uh, the love and the presence and his breathing. You could hear him breathing. And Tommy, my control, uh, helped in the whole process uh, uh, in talking them together, so to say. So that's what happened last January. Was it in darkness or a little red light on? No, it was in darkness because I burned myself twice in red light. Uh, so uh, as long as the spirit world doesn't say to me, put on the light, I wouldn't do it. And the, tw yeah. and the two times that I burned myself, uh, I didn't listen to them, basically. Would you just explain that a little? Because I, I know the answer to this, but 
uh, for someone who hasn't watched this before, and we all have these skeptical minds, mm. you know, why, why would it have to be in the darkness? Yeah. Point of yeah. And what causes the burn too from yeah. the light? Well, if uh, I spoke about the substance of ectoplasm, yes. you know, ectoplasm, if we uh, uh, just take a quick look at ectoplasm, uh, it comes from the Greek word ectos, means outside formed. Uh, and it's a substance that is uh, exuded from my body, mainly from my solar plexus, sometimes from my ear, but mainly from my solar plexus. Um, when it's outside my body, uh, it's very sensitive to light and to touch. So uh, uh, if anyone touches it without permission of spirit world, or if someone would put on a light and even the smallest light, I'm, I'm so sensitive to even the smallest light, then it will shoot back into my body, uh, but with such a speed that it can uh, cause a burn or internal bleeding. Uh, because ectoplasm uh, in the early stages um, cannot stand light. If we take a look at life, all life starts in the dark. If we take a look at, uh, for instance, uh, the birth of a child, you know, uh, all life is being created in the dark, in the womb of a mother. Uh, all the seeds of the plants come from the dark. So that's actually where it all uh, where it all starts and what's happening in a seance room life is being created life is being manifested within the seance room so it's the same principle that's a beautiful way of putting it and i know physical mediums in the past have gotten hurt yeah. uh, you know Absolutely. throughout the course of history there's some terrible stories yes and some you, you know like helen duncan even died from it you know yes. uh, so it's, it's absolutely no game that we play. And as a circle, uh, if you develop in this way, you really have to take your precautions and make sure that the medium is safe. Yes, yeah. definitely. And you have because to trust. Every, every public seance um, has a potential danger in it. And you have to be aware of that. Uh, you know, I also feel, and th this is also personal for me, I would love to be able to work in the light. And I think every physical medium uh, hopes to be able to do that eventually. Uh, the interesting thing is that the spirit world does not sit still and they are inventing as well. So uh, they managed a couple of time to bring light into the ectoplasm. So in that case, they don't need an external light, but the light or the ectoplasm is illuminated by itself. And that's a development that we are going through as well at the moment. What would that look like for one, for one of your sitters? Well, to be honest, I don't know because I'm in a cabinet behind a curtain. Right. So I can only rely on uh, uh, what the people describe, but it's like uh, a faint, a faint light so that they can sh uh, see uh, like a mist or a cloud taking form. That's actually what they witness. That's incredible. And it's objective because yeah. everybody sees it at the same time. And that's, what, you know, it's physical mediumship if everybody in a room sees, hears, or feels yes. the phenomena at the same time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Are there other things happen? Have you ever been levitated or... Oh, that? yes, uh, once, but it scared me so much that I got out of trance and it stopped immediately. <laughs> you know, I'm afraid of heights. So I always say to the spirit world, never, ever levitate me. So one evening, and that was actually an evening where Stuart Alexander was there as well within the home circle. Uh, they heard, uh, they only heard a bang within the cabinet. Uh, and what the spirit world did was they, they lifted uh, the chair at the front only uh, and because I you know I was entranced but still slightly aware so yes. I felt my chair going up and the fear kicked in and that affected my trance state so I came back down again and they never wow. tried it again <laughs> incredible so I said well, don't I do that again you know well, I, I have no clue of course but uh, I don't like that. No. no. They also did uh, matter through matter. 
uh, I'm strapped to the chair uh, yeah. with tie rips uh, around my wrists and around my ankles. And on one occasion, uh, we had uh, my circle leader had the feeling he had to check my legs some extra time. So he did just instinctively, you know, uh, if everything, if I was really strapped to the chair. And uh, at the end of the uh, circle evening, the curtain uh, was opened. And the interesting thing was, was that the tie rip was still connected, you know, around my leg. The other tie rip was still around the chair. They were fully intact, but separated. Huh. <laughs> so, you know, things happen like that. Um, so they are clearly experimenting, yeah. It's yeah. so exciting to me, and I'm sure it is. It here is. at World Wants manifestations and light at some point as well. And um, yeah. yeah, and the most one of the most uh, uh, extraordinary things that uh, touches me personally uh, in the development of our circle at the moment is physical healing, and that is something that is uh, developing uh, in quite an extraordinary way at the moment and uh you know healing to me personally is one of the most important aspects of mediumship yes. and uh, because if healing takes place the soul is touched yes and to me that's and uh, we have the responsibility as mediums we have a big responsibility and we have the responsibility because people come to you, the bereaved people come to you, uh, people uh, uh, who have suffered, who have problems, you know, and um, I feel that if you do your job right in cooperation and love with the spirit world, then whatever form of, he of mediumship you do, healing will somewhere take place. And yes. The interesting thing is that um, uh, quite recently, actually, it's only since a few weeks or a month, um, we have some development in the circle where this, uh, the spirit doctor uh, has materialized and um, treated someone in a seance room physically. Wow, so is all I can say? Yeah. But that's, yeah, well, that was all we could say afterwards. Uh, and that's amazing. And I think um, that's not something that uh, develops in every physical circle. And I always think within physical mediumship uh, or within every form of mediumship, the spirit world always looks what is closest to me. You yes. know, because they will develop or unfold what is within me. And we are all unique. And because healing is very close to me, uh, I think this is one of the aspects they will uh, develop further within the physical mediumship conditions as well. Oh, that's beautiful. I read the yeah. book, Alec Harris, uh, that was written by yeah. his wife, the yeah. spirit doctor that worked through him and the healings are yeah. incredible. Not to mention it's incredible. It's incredible. all the people that would materialize and people yeah. would have be reunited. Yeah. Oh. Now, yeah, one, one thing that, you know, we don't hear too much about physical mediumship, and, and mm -hmm. I always think the physical mediums are rare, but I, I get this instinct that people are sitting in circle all over the world and just yeah. not talking about it. Do you, do you believe that? Um, I think physical, I think true physical mediumship is rare. Yes. I think... Uh, uh, fortunately, there are more and more circles coming because this is how we started, you know, when we go back into spiritualism, this is how we started. We sat in the home circle. That's how the spirit world developed the medium because there is no teacher who can develop a medium. There is, you know, I teach mediumship, but I can't make you a medium. You know, I can guide you. I can support you. I can help you based on my own experience, I can give you some tools and guidance, but that's all I can do. It's up to the spirit people to unfold the gift of mediumship. And they can only do this if we give them our time. 
if yes. we dedicate our time to them and say to them, let's join together. Uh, I've no clue where to go, but this is my time. I'm offering myself to you in friendship and let's do the work that is intended. And that's what we need to do. That's our intention that we should uh, set within the circle. Uh, so I'm happy to hear that more circles are there. Uh, but at the same time, I think it's not, too up, uh, not up to us to decide what to sit for. Because right. it's the spirit world who knows your potential. And if I would have said to the spirit world, oh, you know, let's go into that direction or that direction, I would have never been on this pathway because I never wanted to be on the pathway of physical mediumship. But they took me into it. And they are very clever, you know. Um, I would have never asked the spirit world to build myself a cabinet. And what happened is that we set two years for another medium trying to develop physical mediumship in my home. And the cabinet was there and this particular medium decided to stop. So one evening I was drawn into the cabinet because it was there, you know. And Might I as well try. Sorry? Might as well try. It's sitting there. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. So I just sure. sat in it and I had a great experience, but also a very awkward experience because I fell into a trance state and I came back with a lot of pain on my solar plexus. And I huh. had a scar... Uh, like this on my solar plexus and we took a picture and it lasted for two days well it took two years before someone was able to give me the answer to what it was and uh you know that was eventually it turned out to be the sign that i should sit for physical mediumship uh, so you know you all get those interesting signs and i do believe that if you sit in a circle the spirit world will guide you into the direction you need to be because there might be a wonderful trans medium within the circle sure. or you might develop mental mediumship in a wonderful way with a group of people within the circle. So basically, I would suggest leave it up to them because they know better than we do. Yeah. When we get together in a circle, yeah. uh, some people have heard of it but don't know what to do. And I'm sure we can do some research, but it's something mm. you get together with the same people, same time of the week, every week, right? Yeah. But is it, are you in the dark? Do you sing songs? Do you hold hands? Yeah, well, what I would suggest, uh, you don't need necessarily to sit in the dark from the beginning on. But if you like sitting in the dark, because, you know, it also can give you the feeling of more closeness with the spirit world. Yes. Um, then it's okay just to start in the dark. But there is no cabinet needed in the beginning, in my opinion. Right. You know, because a cabinet is needed for the development of physical mediumship. But if it's not clear what the direction will be, then just sit with a group of like-minded people, you know, and offer your time and love to the other world and say to them, okay, here we are, we sit, we enjoy... Uh, in my early stages, when I started sitting in a circle, I had no clue what to do. So what we did, we had some dim light or red light. Sometimes we sat for half an hour in silence. Sometimes we played some music. You know, we tried a lot of things. Uh, and basically, because we didn't know. And slowly, the spirit world started to, to guide us into a certain direction. And that takes time. Well, time. any relationship takes time, but yeah. I think it's the best relationship to build, and it's so comforting to know that we're not alone. Absolutely. Um, I I'm, enjoy hearing stories of the phenomena, but coming from seeing so many people in grief, I love yeah. hearing the stories of the voices coming through. And yeah. I just and I know so much happened in the past, not yeah. so much to hear about in the present, but I really think if shows like mine and Kathy Beltran, Sacred Dance with Trance, yeah. um, and others can bring to light that as outrageous as this might sound, it's mm. real. And, yeah. and we can start having more of this on planet Earth again, provided mm. a lot of healing. Yeah, yeah. But to come back to your question about circles, I try to motivate people in Holland and people who visit the Zwanenhof 
to sit in the home circle and to start from there in their development because I for a long time in my own development I missed that and if I could change things along the way then I would have started in my own home circle earlier because right. it, it taught me so much you know the spirit world uh, taught me the most things sitting just for them basically yeah well here's my next question there are people like myself that travel so much it's yeah. impossible to I'd ever be home every Tuesday night do you have yeah. any recommendations for people that the best we can do is sit by ourselves to make have a more of a relationship with our spirit yeah, world? yeah. you know um, I think if you travel a lot um, time and distance or the place where you are is not that important concerning your own development it's just the effort and time that you reserve for the other world and it doesn't matter if you are somewhere in a hotel or uh, you know at home in your own room where you normally sit i think the most important uh, uh, aspect is that you dedicate your time wherever you are and if you travel you know i travel a lot uh, yes. and i don't have uh, always the time to sit within my circle but i try to be there as much as i can um, so if i'm not there and I'm, if I'm not working, I just sit for the spirit world quietly. That's what I do. Or I'm, I send my thoughts to where they are at that moment, you know? Yeah. And that's what I do. Uh, but physical mediumship in my own development became so important that um, except from my travel to the United States and to the Alpha Finkley College where you teach a full week, yes. uh, I arrange all my trips around my every Tuesday home circle. I'll be there. So if I travel in Europe, I'll make sure that I'm back on the Tuesday. If I work at the Swanenhof, where we have enough courses that I run here, uh, I schedule myself up on the Tuesday night because I sit with my home circle. So that's how dedicated uh, I am to the home circle. It's a beautiful thing. Yeah. That's yeah. really nice. Yeah. And do you, well, the, the spirit world will tell you when there would be another open seance. Um, well, it, they just told us that, um, well, there is uh, an April trans and physical week, and they just told us that there will be an experimental seance there. Um, very occasionally, we had uh, sometimes someone sitting with us on a Tuesday night. Um, but that's going to change because we are going to introduce like a guest circle on the Thursday evenings once a month. Um, it's not open yet, uh, yeah. but as soon as we get the sign from the spirit world, that will be a possibility for people uh, to sit with uh, me and the home circle. So that's where we are moving uh, towards to. Uh, and yes, on particular, uh, courses that I run here at the Swanenhof, yes, we will do experimental seances. Very exciting. Thank you for doing that. Now, I have heard or I read somewhere that the Arthur yeah. Finley College was trying to um, promote more physical mediumship in the light. Wasn't there something about that? Um, yeah. Away from yeah. the darkness. And it, 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 yeah. And I don't know how I feel about that, although I'm not one of the tutors there, because it's like putting a demand on the spirit world. Yeah. Um, you know, I can only that? give you my, my personal view on yes. it, and, you know, I'm, I don't own the truth. So uh, the thing is that I do believe that we need to leave it up to the spirit people. If yes. they say, turn on the light, turn on the camera, turn on whatsoever, we should do it. You know, if they say, stand on your head, we should do it. That's right. You know, if they s don't say anything like that... And if it's this world demanding the spirit world, I feel something is going wrong. But that's my own personal view. Yeah. Because uh, I learned from experience that we will be harmed if we don't listen. Yeah. And we have to be careful. We sure. have to be careful. Yeah. yeah. Well, so that's I'm how a... I feel. 
yeah, I'm a big fan of the Arthur Finley College you teach there. And I'll be yeah. going there in June for a trance mediumship class myself. Great. So great. it'll be my third trip back there. And well, I, I sure love have a great time. Love to learn. I really do. Yeah. I love to learn. I love to share. Nicole, is there anything I should have asked you that I didn't ask you or that you would like to share? Or even some closing words? Well, um, I'm not sure if I'm repeating again, but I really would like to emphasize within each and everyone's development of mediumship that people realize that we are all unique, that mm -hmm. we all have our own pathway to go and that the spirit world tries to find ways with each and every one of us to work in his or her own unique way. Uh, and I hope that people who develop mediumship, uh, that they will do it in their unique way and not become a copy of someone else. Uh, mm -hmm. Because, you know, we have enough Nicole de Haastes and other mediums uh, and the spirit world needs your uniqueness because there are so many people in spirit. Um, and I think if we uh, realize that and if we realize that we are that power because sometimes I hear people say, you know, oh, um, um, do I have to be in that power? How do I build that power with the spirit world? And I always say to people, you know, it's not doing something. Mediumship is a state of being, not a state of doing. And you are that power. And if you come to that realization that you are power, then you already move your awareness to the other world. And then there is that meeting place being created where the miracles take place. And that's what I want people to be aware of, that you don't have to do something, just be and allow that power to guide you and trust that there is no wrong turn because you need exactly where you need to be right now. Oh, that's beautiful. And it really is a relationship we're building. It is, it is. It's hard work, but it's worthwhile, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, Nicole, thank you so much for being our guest today. Thank you. I really enjoyed it. And if you have any time in future, you are very welcome at the Swanamog as well. I have a feeling I will get there. Because it just seems my path. That I Well, up to the spirit world, but I find myself in some really great places with great people. And then I get yeah. to share. Because yeah. not everybody can make the trip. So the fact that I get to share, I'm yeah. very that true but we get a lot of americans here at the moment mm -hmm. so that's very nice and you know if people are interested to 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 come to come over to this wonderful place uh, then you are very welcome oh well i'll be there and could you just tell us your website i know i said it at the beginning of the show but my, i can get all the links yes, yes. my website is www.nicoldehaas.nl and yes. we have a swanenhof website with a mediumship program and that is www.zwanenhof.com. Beautiful. And for our listener at the very bottom of this episode in the description, I have the live link so that you can visit both and even also the link to Nicole's book, which I am so excited to, to read and inspired. Uh, so Nicole, thank you one more time for being our guest today. Thank you, Sandra. And uh... I'm sure we will meet again. I believe we will. And to our listener or viewer, depends if you're on iTunes or YouTube uh, watching or listening to this, thank you for spending the hour with Nicole and I. Every episode, I just feel like an onion that just the layers get, just getting peeled mm -hmm. away. And it's, there's something so beautiful and ripe and delicious right in the middle. Um, but it's just beautiful and it's our own unfoldment. Trust you're at the perfect place you need to be right now. So just a few reminders. Um, my website or our website for the show is we don't die radio.com. And there you can find now over 250 uh, episodes. Most of them are audio. There are a few video. We're moving into the new realm with that. But also I offer a few free gifts. One is a uh, a 19 page, no, not 19 page. It's called Sandra's 19 Reasons to Believe in the Afterlife. It's a PDF report. There's an audio that I created called How to Survive Grief, because grief is what got me into this world of um, talking about the afterlife. And then also it says, 
uh, read a few chapters from my book. And the secret is it's actually my whole book of We Don't Die, A Skeptic's Discovery of Life After Death. I want to give you everything I've got. And so do our guests that you know that um, death is an illusion. Our life goes on. Our loved ones are around us. Our, our lives are valuable. So uh, this coming September, I will be one of the speakers at the Afterlife Symposium in Scottsdale, Arizona, September 13th through 16th. And you can go to afterlifesymposium.org to find out more about that. So in closing, my name is Sandra Champlain. And as always, I am so happy that I get to be your host on We Don't Die Radio. I do believe that life is an education for the soul, that your life here on earth is important. You are loved, you're magnificent, you're a special being. And uh, our development happens how it's meant to be. You are unique and know that you're perfect and loved. So thank you for listening, and we'll see you soon. <laughs>